Brian Dulesky with Able Distributors. Welcome to the Cast Iron Radiator BTU Calculation Site. Now, what we're going to do today is try and get it so you can, on your own, use our guide to figure out how many BTUs each cast iron radiator puts out. Now, baseboard is easy to figure out. That's on another chart. But today, we're going to be talking about cast iron radiators, steam or water. So, finding the BTUs, you're going to get the BTUs of each section and just however many sections you have in that radiator, you're going to add them up. So there's a number of reasons you'll want to do this. Whether you're replacing the boiler and you want to make sure you put the accurate size boiler in there. And years ago, they put a 400,000 BTU boiler, even though they know the max radiation they could get out of everything might only be 200,000. They oversized to be on the safe side. And nowadays it's just a waste with an energy uh, and gas costing as much as it is, sizing things right or is, is important. So we're going to teach you how to figure out the BTUs for each section. And then you can add up the sections of each radiator, write that down, and you can go through the house. So let's say you're changing on a boiler. You need to know the whole radiation load, how much all the radiators combined is possible to radiate. And then you're going to go a little over that for fudge, uh, loss of piping and stuff like that. So maybe you'll go 20, 25% over that number. But another reason would be you've got a cracked radiator. You can't find one exactly the same size, but you want similar BTU output. So maybe the one that you have access to might be a little bit longer. Maybe it's a little bit taller. Maybe it's a little uh, deeper. As long as you're keeping the BTUs the same, then you know you can swap that out. So another situation where you really want to know the BTUs that you can radiate out of a radiator is let's say they change the room and instead of having one window, they put a wall of windows in and that room is starting to get a little chilly. So what you might want to do is play with either water temperature and in the chart, you can see what different water temperatures do to the BTU output of a cast iron radiator. Or you might say, well, you know what? If I went with a bigger radiator, added a few more sections, how many more BTUs could I get? Or maybe with the pipes coming up through the floor, maybe you're like, well, I can't go wider without a, a ton of work, but maybe I can go taller or I can go deeper. So when you're calculating this out, you're going to have to know the height. You're going to have to know the width and the width is out from the wall. You're going to have to know the number of columns or tubes just so you can find something in the charts that's as close to what you're looking at as humanly possible. The number of sections, again, you're going to find the value, the EDR of one section. And that EDR is the equivalence of the direct radiation. So what this one section can radiate to the air, to the room. And then you're going to multiply that by how many sections you have. So you're going to know, have to know the number of sections, and then you're going to have to know the water temp that you're running it at. It's a huge difference if it's 160 to 180 or 212 if it's steam, whatever it is. You got to know these things. Now, if you're trying to use our guide and you just get stumped, if you make a list and you send us all this information and to any one of the branches, we'd be more than happy to help you make sure you size everything right. And as long as we're talking about uh, cast iron, I am going to mention real quick that cleaning it, putting cleaner in before you remove that old boiler, letting it circulate and cleaning it out, and then putting F1 in to treat that water is always a good idea. And to go with something like the IntiClean, where you've got a somewhat of a mesh strainer, you've got a magnet in here, a way to bleed, you can add chemical here, you can mount this any which way possible. It's got isolation valves. It's a nice piece too. But let's get back to this. Knowing the BTUs of each section. And again, this one, I couldn't find this exact one on a chart. So this is four tubes and tubes just kind of go into a header. Four tubes, 19 and a half wide, five inches or high, five inches wide. So I'll look on the chart to see what this is. It'll give me a number for the EDR. Now I'll multiply that EDR by the table and then I'll get the BTUs that this piece puts out. Now let's say this thing is 30 or 40 inches long. It might have 20 of these sections. It might have 25 of these sections. So then you can build up and see how many BTUs that cast iron radiator puts out. Add them all up. And again, 
You don't want to go under. I would always go over because you're going to lose something in the piping, especially if it's an older house. Some of those pipes run up outside walls, long distances. You're going to lose some BTUs in the piping. So if you added up all the radiators and it comes up with 110,000 BTUs, please don't size it at 100. It's too small. If it came out 110,000 BTUs, I would go up. I would probably go to the next size, maybe a 150, and I'd call it a day. So along with treating and chemicals, you can also flush this. So we have a flush cart uh, at Able. So if you're buying a boiler from us and you want to flush the system out, it's a, it's a cart on dolly. It's got a really powerful motor. You hook it up and it basically cleans and flushes out the system. So when you put that new boiler in, you're starting fresh. Brian Dulesky, Able Distributors. Thank you. Mm -hmm.